Released in 1942, Bambi has become one of the most recognizable Disney characters ever created. Following the early life of a newborn fawn deer, we're treated both to a view of what life is like from the perspective of a woodland animal, and possibly the saddest event to ever come out of fiction. Identifying which species of deer Bambi is can be a bit tricky, as there's many species worldwide that share this general appearance. So, it'd be simplest to say which species of deer Bambi is not first. The easiest way to go about doing this is to determine the geographical location of the story, which is... The, the forest. It's literally just called the forest. That means nothing for us. That could literally be in my backyard. Bambi! Are you out there? <sighs> Despite the lackluster description, I think I have actually pinpointed a setting that's pretty fitting for this location on Earth. Bambi isn't the only animal in the forest. It's teeming with wildlife, from rabbits to skunks, and this is the important one, raccoons. Raccoons themselves are only native to North America, which additionally only hosts two species of deer, but unfortunately, the raccoon itself does not confirm any setting in North America, as they've also been introduced to Japan and Europe for hunting reasons. So this isn't enough to say we're in North America. But you see this bird? This is definitely a quail. Take note of the drooping plumage over the top of its head. While deer species may not range drastically in appearance between some, quails do. And this color combo, both for the adult and babies, matches closest to that of the mountain quail. What's more, this species can only be found in the northern Rocky Mountains of North America, which would fit as we can see the story actually takes place around mountains. So this is the smoking gun we were looking for. Now that we've determined North America is our area of focus, let's go back and look at those deer species I alluded to again. America's deer species includes the white-tailed deer and the mule deer. Both of these do look pretty similar admittedly, but there are a few things that set them apart. Mule deer get their names for their large ears resembling their namesake animal. Also, while not determining their names, their tails are paintbrush shaped, somewhat like that of a lion. Bambi though, doesn't really have this shape. Instead, the tail covers the entirety of Bambi's hindquarters, and he's able to raise it as if it were a flag. In fact, his shape is pretty identical to that of a white-tailed deer. Including the ears being smaller, this is certainly our candidate. Before we get to the main topic of this video, here's a few fun facts about Bambi and the white-tailed deer. The reason baby deer are born with these white spots is for camouflage purposes. Since mother deer can't always look after their fawns when they need to gather food, these spots allow the baby to blend in with their surroundings. The brown coat with the white spots creates an illusion of mushrooms at the base of a tree or even flowers in a prairie. In fact, these spots are present on most living species of deer, not only the white-tailed. Now, for the reason you've clicked on this video, why the heck was Bambi banned in Germany? Well, to understand this, we must go all the way back to 1923. You see, Bambi the movie was based on Bambi the book properly titled Bambi, A Life in the Woods. Before moving on, it's worth mentioning that the novel version of Bambi is not a white-tailed deer, but rather a western roe deer, a species of deer common across the European continent. Bambi, A Life in the Woods is a lot more grim than the movie, focusing a lot more upon Bambi's difficult adult ears and the devastation man has brought to the forest and its inhabitants. I mean, Jesus Christ, the poor guy survives a bullet wound and has to emotionally abandon his wife. As you may have guessed, the moral of this novel is to bring awareness to the human field destruction of the environment, through the eyes of those who are unable to defend themselves. Honestly, a pretty straightforward message. At least it should be. Enter 1930 Germany. While I'll try to dance around the name of the power and control during this period, it's impossible not to reference them if I'm going to explain the reason for this novel's ban. The government, at this time, interpreted the story as an allegory for the massacre and mistreatment of the Jewish people living in the country at this time, with the hunters representing the country's dictatorship, in alignment with their heavy censorship guidelines. The book got the chopping in 1936, outlawing the novel throughout the entire country. Most of these novels were eviscerated via fire, making first editions extremely hard to find nowadays. While I cannot find an exact date for when the book was unbanned, the animated film released March 3rd, 1994, over 50 years after its initial publication. So, I assume the novel's re-release was way overdue as well. If you happen to know the German re-release date or window, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to pin the response for others to read. Subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed this episode, and leave in the comments what single fictional animal you'd like me to cover in the future. Thank you for watching, and continue to explore. 
the biodiverse. <laughs>